Okay, yeah, you can check your phone and go to Color Bold and see if you can see the video. Oh, no, I wanted to turn the phone down. I didn't want it ringing. Oh, turn it off. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we're live. Yolanda. Woohoo. We are <laughs> live in Facebook land. Yay. Yolanda, welcome. And everybody, welcome to Color Bold Spotlight of the Month of June with Yolanda Martin. Uh, I just wanted to say something quickly here about the Color Bold Spotlight. And this will be the eighth. Colorful Spotlight. My name is Mia. I work for UW-Madison Division of Extension. I work predominantly with um, economic development and entrepreneurs of color, specifically through the Colorful Business Association. And I have the honor of putting on this monthly Colorful Spotlight at the end of each month. And so I wanted, I'm very honored to introduce to you somebody I've been working with for quite, quite some time now. Um, and Colorful does have a few highly talented real estate agents. And this month, we are shining the light on Yolanda Martin uh, from the real estate, uh, Colorful Real Estate Group. And nothing provides Yolanda with greater satisfaction than helping her clients. And she realized very early on in her real estate career that happy clients are what makes her happy. Yolanda focuses on being the kind of real estate professional that will listen to her clients understand the market and always be positioned to stay ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. Yvonne, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. This is fun. I'm doing this good. Thank you, Maya. Yes, yes. Did you want to add anything to that introduction? Because I know you have a very rich background in real estate and I know you may want to maybe add something to that pretty short introduction. Well, no, I mean, that's pretty, um, what you read is basically how it is. Um, I do, it's all about the customer. So if you're gonna be a realtor, you definitely have to be a people person because it's all about relationships. That's the business, mm -hmm. you know, um, the money should be not your first priority. I, you know, it might, be a, it might be a helpful way to get you there, but it's about relationships. Sure, so, sure. Yes. So on, on, that, uh, on that note, Yolanda, uh, and also, I just want to mention to everyone listening in, please share your thoughts, any questions for Yolanda in the chat box. That's, that's your vehicle to, to interact with us, and we'll be sure to have those answered. I just wanted to see first, Yolanda, if you could tell us some more about your real estate business how, and how it got started. How did you get this idea that you wanted to become a realtor? Well... That's pretty simple. I started actually in 2010. Um, uh, guru, uh, his name was Dean, I think Gar Garagio or something like that. And what he was, was a real estate investor. And he came to town and um, invited all these people to this motel. And they start telling us how you can flip houses. And I was so excited about that. And that's how I got started. I got started by flipping houses. They gave you all this information and all this literature. And I thought, God, this is a good idea. And I did that. And actually, oh. just this last month, I sold my rentals. I've had them for well, 2010, 2012. So that was the beginning of it was getting into the flipping business buying distressed homes for a very uh cheap price fixing them up and reselling them and that that was fun and then i thought you know what i think i'd like to be a realtor i like this okay. so it was a gateway into real estate oh, okay. that's how i started yes that's okay. exactly how i started <laughs> that's so I think there might be people on the on this um, on this live here, Yolanda, that might be interested in hearing about the specific steps of how you become a realtor, um, and what kind of certification or anything like that that you went through to to become one. Okay, so what I did, I didn't want to skip anything. So what what I did was um, first I made up my mind. Um, I was intrigued with the real estate, so I um, uh, I studied. I studied because you have to take an exam. So that's how you start out. You gotta, uh, um, you gotta take an exam. Uh, what else did I do? You have to have money to invest. 
uh, real estate is more of a commit commission. So people should know that it's not, there's not a million agencies out there that pay you. You are, you're actually an independent contractor where you're working for yourself, but you might work under a firm like First Weber or Colwell Banker, but you're really an independent contractor. So you okay. have to um, realize that, take your okay. tests, take these exams, you have to pass them. And then you want to get with a, a firm, you know, someone that's going to give you the right tools, you know, and the, the marketing tools and, to guide you. Right, right. So I those are the that's a, that's a really good clarification, Yolanda. I think it's easy for people, including myself, to think that you're, you're an employee for a real estate firm. But no, you're an independent small business owner, really. Absolutely. And you gotta, you know, you gotta think of that. There's pre-licensing and there's um the exams and the applications. They do background checks because you're 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 you know, they check you out in Madison. So you know, make sure that um I don't know what would hinder you, but they do do background checks, you know. Okay. Um you're going into people houses, you know. So right. you want to make sure that you don't have anything out there that um, is going to stop you once you spent all your money to get to where you want to go. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to, you don't want to um, have some kind of hidden secret out there because mm. it'll come out. <laughs> it will come out. Okay. Now, mm. when you got started, did you get any type of business, business support? I'm sorry. So when you got started with your real estate business, did you get any support from either organizations, banks, friends, family, anything like that? Any kind of business support? Well, uh, the company provides the technology and the tools that you need. Once you connect with a, um, a agency, again, like a Cobalt Banker, you know what I mean, First Weber, once you get with a, a agency, um, they supply you with the tools that you need and it's in abundance, you know, they really mm -hmm. set you up for success. But as far as, as far as money or grants or like that, it's not that type of a business. It's not like um, a restaurant or something, uh, a shoe store, what have you. So no, I didn't get any funding or anything like that. And, and another thing is that when you get into real estate, you really want to make sure you have a nest egg because it is commission. So you really, oh. like a lot of us agents um, and a lot of us not, we have jobs because right. you just can't get up one day and say, and, and, unless you're independent, wealth, wealthy, independently sure. wealthy. You know, does that make sense? You just, you got to have some kind of money because you got to keep paying your bills and you don't know, basically, if you don't sell something, you don't have any money. Sure. So no, the answer to your question, I did not have any um, funding. There was no sure. funding for getting into real estate. You bring money to the table actually to get in. It costs money to get into real estate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so you're saying for your own um sense of stability you you were sure to have like a part-time stable job on the side to be able to pay bills and that kind of thing absolutely until you get to where you want to go and i myself i always i've i've been doing it for six years now and i just down to a part-time job because i was working both for, you know full-time yeah. i had to so that's kind of like a, and they tell you when i started out they tell you it takes about a good five years. So I think that I'm doing good. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I have a part-time job that I, I don't want to give up until, because I'm scared. It's like, I got to know that even if it's a part-time job, when I punch in and punch out, I know that that check's going to be there. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. So in these, in these six years, how has your business grown or changed? Well, in these six years, um, this year was my best year ever. Uh, it's uh, grown because now I have repeat business, which took a while because when you're in real estate, 
you are your business and you have to grow your business. And that, again, it brings me back to it's a people's business. It's a relationship. So you got to build these relationships with these people and, and, and stay in contact with them and let them know that you're a realtor and so they can refer you. It's about referrals. So sure. my business this year, to answer your question, um, I've gotten repeat business. And that's that's when you're growing, you know, when okay. you the same when somebody calls you back or someone says, Hey, M Maya sent me to you, you know, you're like, oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that's so how it's grown it's this like year. Like referrals and word of mouth, and then that's made your business grow. Absolutely. Okay. So you kind of built a name for yourself. Right, right, right. And is it predominantly in the Oshkosh area, Yolanda? Well, actually, what I do is I work the Fox Valley. So for me, it would be Appleton all the way to Fond du Lac. Anything mm -hmm. other than that would be too long for me. And it wouldn't benefit anyone because I really don't want to drive past Fond du Lac. You know, it might be snowy or rainy, but I will drive the Fond du Lac. And I will drive to Appleton because I live in Oshkosh. But then when you start getting outside of Appleton and that's getting too far. So sure. if you stay in an area that you know, you can better help your, um, right. your customers and clients. And I'm sure it's also about you knowing those markets really well too. Right. right. And that's where a lot of, excuse me, that's where a lot of the uh, technology comes in because even if you don't live in that area, your um, agency sets you up where you can go on an MLS and you can do these scans and you can find out what the houses were selling for. So yeah, um, all kinds of information out there if you use it, yeah, for the agents. And you're talking about, um, earlier you were talking about, you know, having some type of stability. I was curious and I do, we talked quite a bit during the last year, um, during the, you know, the shutdown and everything. Um, how, how did you, can you share any lessons that you learned during COVID specifically because of how you may have to change some of your, your delivery, you know, methods and, and interacting with clients? What have you learned, Yolanda? Well, that was, um, geez, that was almost so sudden. Um, mm -hmm. What I learned from that was a lot of Zoom. I know that Zoom must have been out there, but it was almost for like, um, we weren't using it. So I have made a note here. I know for Zoom, for, for us, we went to the meetings we, uh, every Wednesday at Cobo Banker, all the agents get together with the manager and we have meetings, you know, down in our basement. And she tells us what's going on. It's a good thing because it keeps you up to date on what's going on in your area. But that all stopped when COVID came in. So we had to get all connected with Zoom. Uh, we all each had to take turns and setting it up, which, see, is, which is a learning tool because right. we didn't know. So we learned, um, about Zoom and the video, the uh, teleconferencing communication, other than going to their house, we would chat on Zoom. Uh, just, it, it, it was not just Zoom, but all those video type um, Zoom-like meetings. So that changed our business quite a bit. Yeah. And did you do like virtual tours? With virtual any tours, webinars. Okay. Uh, uh, just, uh, events, online events, not just chatting with people. I mean, everything yeah. kind of went to a video thing, not just talking like we're talking. Actually, um, the events, uh, you, they would say, uh, this year we're not having this, but join us at this webinar. So it was just, actually, it was an experience and I really like it. There's nothing like face to face um, right. business, but that really, I, I like that, you know, come the winter time, you know, and a lot of people like that too, you know, a lot of customers, um, the e sign something, if you can't mm. um, explain something, you could show them through Zoom or go over the paperwork. I think it was a good learning curve. And I, I, it, and I think it's something for everybody that just won't go away because of COVID. People will still 
continue to live this way. Sure, that's a really interesting uh, point. I was wondering if that's something you're gonna bring bring with you post post COVID, in, in terms of like being able to offer your clients certain certain e services or virtual services that you wouldn't have done if you didn't learn all this a year ago. Right. right, right. No, actually, Maya, what we did was um the um is have people come to the office. I mean, and that's just how real estate was. It's like, well, what time can we meet at um, in the office? You know, what day? And now today it's like, okay, I'll send you a link. You can be on your phone. We had agents on their way to the office talking on their phone. I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. Again, it doesn't take the place of that personal, but in the way it is personal. And people, people prefer that some. To have flexibility, I think I, I, yes. can, I can really I can really see how that that may have changed a lot of industries and a lot of different segments of um, you know yes. different different types of professions and works. Um, Kim Yada is ask is going to ask you a question here, Yolanda. So she's saying in Northeast Wisconsin, there's a lot of diversity concerning realtors. Wait. In Northeast Wisconsin, is there a lot of diversity concerning realtors? And do you think there's room for more realtors in the area? I think there's more room uh, for realtors anywhere they want to be because each realtor is different. You've got people that will go out of their way. I've personally gotten business because the last realtor wasn't good. You, okay. you know, so there's room if there's something that you want to do, you just got to go for it. Yeah, yes, there's definitely more room. Come to Coldwell Banker, the real estate group. <laughs> yes, tell her um, definitely there's more room. And um, sure. Um, do you, what about the diversity aspect? Do you feel like there is enough diversity in terms of various backgrounds, uh, racial backgrounds, and you know, in terms of being being more you know, not just, not, not just one, one size fit all. I get it. I do actually. Um, it's just so funny that you would ask that question because six years ago, or maybe I did not notice, um, um, I didn't see any black people, but now my goodness, I see, uh, the Spanish Mexican, the Spanish speak, uh, speaking people, white people, black people. Uh, so yes, it's like, it's changed. Every, it's changed. You know, okay. even Como Baker, uh, they always welcome the newcomer on a marquee, if you will. And I see uh, like, oh, look at these two ladies are black. You know, I'm like, wow. And then there's um, uh, we've got Mexican people or Spanish speaking people in our office. Now, actually, two young men. That wasn't six years ago. And not only that, real estate is not just selling real estate we've got um um the closing people we, we we've got um the lenders Bankers. yeah yes yeah. you know you know they call me up with their heavy accents like do you speak spanish like they're dying to get an agent to speak spanish i'm like no i guess yolanda they always think of like oh that's oh, yolanda she oh, probably spoke okay. speak, speak spanish but <laughs> But so I'm just saying it just doesn't stop as a yeah. real estate agent, you know, you have your lenders. Right. So it's change. And yeah. um, this young man in my office that is, um, he's, a, he's from Mexico. He speaks Spanish. He's a young, handsome young man. Brand new. He's got a million dollar listing. So her, uh, tell her, yes, there's room for everybody and anybody yeah. because you are your own business and it's how you. Right. It's how you conduct yourself. What you were saying that really relates to that, that relationship aspect. I'm thinking is you know the 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 more diverse your 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 real uh, realtors are, probably the more uh, more clients overall you will get because then you have you have created more connections. People may feel more drawn to um, you know people that they may be able to communicate with easier or feel more more connection to yeah, yeah. yes yes absolutely all right um 
So on the horizon here, Yolanda, what is on the horizon for your real estate business? Where do you see yourself in about five years? Um, where do I see myself in about five years? Well, let me think here. Uh, well, I really can't say what the future holds, but I can say that real estate has opened up some doors for me and I would like to see myself um, getting a broker's license and doing more business with the state and with the government. Um, I've been checking into stuff like that. It's not easy, but there's opportunities out there. And um, mm -hmm. I've been, um, I'm into SAMS. So I've got credentials going. So that's where I see myself trying to get a uh, business more from the government and from sure. the state. And there's other aspects of real estate too. It's not all about just being a residential um, um, salesperson. Sure. So, so you're looking for bigger contracts, government contracts. Maybe yeah, more leasing state. out things and, you know, more, uh, yeah, just other opportunities. It, it, again, yeah. if you don't try, you'll never know. I love that about you. You're always open to learning new things. And that's pretty, that's pretty remarkable. Thank you. Um, anything that you would like to add before we wrap up here, Yolanda, any words of advice? to anyone who's interested in becoming a realtor who, or who's just interested in maybe becoming a small business owner? Well, I'd like to say, you know, you got to go for it. And, you know, and if you do go for it, just make sure you have a little nest egg put aside because it's, you're not going to get paid and it's, um, it's not overnight. The real estate is very, um, again, it brings me back to say it's your own business and it doesn't happen overnight. You have to grow your business. So, you know, make sure that you got all your eggs and your ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. Go for it and call me, you know, I mean, oh, there's Yolanda. just, yes. what's that? You, yeah, yeah, I just said, yeah, call, call Yolanda. You, you actually got another question here from Kitty who Colorbold is uh, working with uh, from Cap Services. Uh, Kitty's asking you, Yolanda, if there would be an opportunity to become a woman certified business. A woman certified business? Yep. As far as what? Join um, a woman certified? I'm thinking probably with the certification, you were talking about government contracts, so maybe like oh, women and minority certified. Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's agencies out there like that. And you just uh, have to uh, qualify. If you have a business, you have to qualify for them and pay a fee. And you really got to have your stuff in order because I tried and I was rejected. But it was a learning curve. I paid my $350. Um, I can't remember. It was WBOS or something like that. I can't remember. But it's a woman's business. It's certification. There's all kinds of certifications out there. Mm -hmm. You just have to go to Sam's and um, you got to get into the government and look them up. Oh, it's, it, it's worth it. So yeah. am I one right now? No, but they're, they're, they are out there. Yeah. Okay. And you actually got another question here while we were talking. Um, Kimyata is wondering if there's a separate license for commercial. And she's also asking and seeing storefronts close and things going online. What do you foresee happening to all the commercial properties? There's, uh, there's not a separate license for commercial, but you can get an enhancement. Like there's a CCIM, I believe, um, where you, where you're, um, you've got extra training for, for commercial. And it really helps because it takes a lot of hours to get, you work under a trained person. So it shows that you have the knowledge to sell this Walmart or where me being a sell person, I don't, you know. Okay. So there, there are other certifications that you can get to um, show that you're, you're able to sell commercial. And do you yeah. have any perspective on, on Kimyata's other question about online, a lot of storefronts closing, a lot of things going online. Do you, do you have any 
for do you, do you see any any changes happening with commercial properties with with those trends? Um, I'm not a commercial expert, but I do know that because of COVID, a lot of uh, businesses have gone under and that uh, commercial buildings will probably be in abundance, you know, but it takes, um, I think that a C, what is it? I'm so sorry, CCIM, a person like for a Walmart or a dentist building or something like that, you want you want a, a better credential than a real estate salesperson license to sell something like, excuse me, to sell something like that. But to answer your question, I see, I do see them coming about online. I really can't say, um, I really can't say too much about real uh, mm -hmm. commercial because yeah. I'm not a commercial expert. Gotcha. Okay. I think um, that is our last question from the audience, as far as I can see. Well, thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. Do you have any like other final words that you can think of or? Not that I can think of. This was fun to do. It was super fun. I had a lot of fun. Um, and you take care. And then um, thank you again, Yolanda, for, for being on in the spotlight in June here with us with Colorbold Business Association. And I want to thank everybody who tuned in. Be sure to, to tune into our next month one. We are still deciding who that will be for Spotlight. So please let me know if you're interested in becoming a Spotlight for uh, our upcoming months. And then um, also check out our other Spotlight videos from September of 2020. We have a lot of saved archived ones. So they're all really interesting. They're all amazing business owners here in Northeast Wisconsin. So. Thanks everyone for joining and uh, we'll stay in touch. Thanks again, Yolanda. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.